What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm John Levesque. I'm your host. Today, I am joined by community superstar, MVP, my bro, Yash Agarwal. What's going on, Yash? How you been, buddy? I'm doing good, John. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm getting some cabin fever. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I got to leave home. I'm spending my money like crazy trying to have retail therapy. It's not good, bro. It's not good. How about you? How are you holding up? I just got a PlayStation, so I'm just spending my days on that, you know. A PlayStation, not an Xbox? Yeah. Aww. <laughs> All right, that's okay, that's okay. Because you can still play Warzone with us, and that's the important Okay. Part. All right. yeah. Okay, so on to the lesson at hand. Me and Yash previously have done a, a bunch of videos together, and one of them has been very popular in particular. We did one on forms attachments. And ever since we did the forms attachments videos, we, both of us, have had two regular questions about forms attachments. And they are as follows. Question number one, how do I do a form with multiple attachments? And so Yash is gonna show us that. And the second question we get is, how do I complete this if my attachment is empty? And so Yash is gonna show us that. So without further ado, Yash, why don't you go ahead, take the stage, introduce yourself to the people, let them know who you are, what you do, where you work, all that good stuff, and then take it away, my friend. So um, as you've told, the topic for today is multiple attachments on MS Forms. So we'll be walking over through how we can create a form that uh, accepts attachments and then we'll see how we can pull those attachments in flow and then send it over emails. A uh, quick intro on myself here. So I'm Yash Agarwal, working with Applied Information Services as a software developer in India. And I'm also a Microsoft Business Applications MVP, a community of Flownaut and an astronaut on the Power Communities. So you can reach out to me on my Twitter here or uh, Go, go over my blog, pilotevs.com. So let's go ahead and build a flow now to get all these uh, data from the form. And then yeah. we'll iterate over each item and then finally send it in the email. Okay. So I'll start a new flow from here. The best part, it's building the flow. Yes. And I'll skip it directly so we can find the trigger here. So Yash doesn't mess with the, the guided experience. He goes straight into the creator experience. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll select the onboarding form here. Okay. And then the next step is to get the details of the response that was submitted. So yep. uh, I'll again search for forms. And this is a, a, a necessary action. I'm not sure why they haven't just built this into the trigger. Uh, I hope at some point they'll just build this step into the trigger. But if you're working with forms and following along, anytime you work with a form full, you have to have this get response details as your first action. So keep that in mind. Correct. I think in the just uh, the trigger, it returns the ID only for some reason. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I'll add a compose action over here, so that we get whatever what we get the details of the uh, files that are coming in in the file question. And this is the question, or this the answer to this is uh, sent to the compose action. Okay. So now I'll save this. Once saved, I'm going to run the flow. Uh, I'm going to fill the form now. So that we get the uh, get the response populated over here. So okay. I just say test, and then I'll come to the forms here. I'll provide a response. Then department, let's say IT. So we had the option of providing three attachments. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll provide two attachments over here. Okay. take this one so these are basic screenshots from uh, my blog post nice. and then i'll submit it over here once i submit this flow should trigger and then we have all the details in compose action so as you can see in the compose action we have this starting with the uh, square bracket which is an array so this returns it with an array of the file of the details of the files on the form and uh, now we will use the parse JSON action to extract these details. So I'll copy over the entire response over here, edit this flow, add a new step as parse JSON, and the content for this is coming from the response to the IDs question. And in the schema, we'll generate it from the sample payload. And that's and that's what we just took from the previous step. Correct. Yes. And then done. So this has generated the schema for us. Now 
the new step is to get the file content from the OneDrive folders. So I'll add the action, get file content. As we'll be providing the path of the file, I'll use the action get file content using path. Okay. Uh, sorry, wrong action here. It's on one right. So and remember the difference. There's one drive and one drive for business. And so you gotta be clear on which one you're using. Yep, we're using the one drive for business. The awesome. one get file content using path. Okay. So here what we'll see is if you click this folder icon, you'll be able to navigate to the uh form first you select apps and then uh, it will load the microsoft forms folder which it has created and then you'll see all the forms that support attachments and then you select the onboarding form here and then the question so once we select we'll be able to see the ids of each of the uh, uploaded files so i have copied this path over here i directly select it from here and paste the path now, after the question, I want to add a slash and then provide the name from the dynamic content of the past JSON. Nice. So as you can see, the moment I provided the name, it has uh, pulled this action into an apply to each loop because the output from the uh, ID's answer is basically an array that we just saw in the run history. So it has multiple items. So it will iterate over each of those and get the content for each of the file that has been attached to this form. Yep, cool. Now, now that we have the content, we now uh, need something or a container to put all this in. So we'll at initialize a variable over here. Let's name it as file. And this is of type array because there are multiple uh, files that we want to populate this array with. And then I'll add an action over here, which is append to array variable. Now we'll be constructing a JSON object with the attachment so that it can be passed directly in the Outlook action that will be sent as an email. So the main components are first the name of the file along with the extension. So we'll just provide the name and then the content which will go as content bytes. Here we have to pro provide the base 64 string of the attachment. So I'll switch to the expression editor, put base 64 here. And within the brackets, select the file content from the previous action and then click OK. So as you can see, it has wrapped the file content in the base64 expression, base64 function basically, and then we'll click save. Finally, we will add this send an email action so that we can add the attachments and send the email to the uh, administrator. Here, I'll just mention my account for now. I love watching you work, Yash. I like how you are so methodical where you'll go forward in a flow to establish a piece, but then kind of come back and, and, and build the piece that you need to then finish out that part. Like, I feel like your mastery of the Lego blocks is always very amazing to me. So it's just like putting all the pieces together one by one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and knowing where the right part goes, which it's very obvious you do. Yeah. So this name is basically the name of the person who has submitted the form and the department, the information which we are collecting. So I'll again do the department thing here and then the, the email is ready, but we'll have to add attachments. So uh, click on the show advanced options part over here. You'll be able to add individual attachments as individual files, or we can directly pass an array by clicking this mm. icon. So now nice. it accepts the input as an array and we'll directly pass the variable over here. Oh, that's our, so handy. Yeah, our email action is ready now. Man, then that saves I a lot of time than having to do content and name and content and name for each file. I see now, I see now why the variable and the array and the, and the apply to each, this is genius. I love this. Correct. Because the reason is like we are providing the, with the option of uh, attaching three files, but it not, it is not necessary that they'll attach three files. It might be two or it might be one. It's dynamic. 
so yeah. we wanted to be like that love it and then now we'll uh, add a scope control to put all these actions into the scope the scope is just a group it's a way you group yeah. things together and organize And this scope is basically uh, catering to our multiple attachments problem that we're trying to solve. The okay. other problem is to check if the uh, if not if there was no attachments provided. So for that, I'll add a control action over here, which is condition. And then here we'll type empty because we want to check if the uh, response returned as empty for the IDs question. And I'll select the IDs over here. So it will populate the uh, question for me. And then, okay. Now we want to check if it is equal to false. So I'll write false here. Okay. okay. So now that if if this, uh, the empty expression returns with a Boolean value, if the empty is true, we do not want to uh, go into the attachments loop. So we'll directly send an email stating that uh, there was no attachments provided. But if it is false, that which means there are attachments, we want to go, we want the flow to go into the scope. So I'll pull the scope and put it in the yes branch here. Nice. That's so clean. It saves you, saves you time on your flow, also saves you flow runs. You don't have to be iterating over files that you know you don't need. That's fantastic. Uh, and then another send an email action here so that we notify the admin that, okay, the form has been submitted, but without attachment so that they can reach out to the person and check with them. Okay. Nice. This Require is awesome. The details here. It's really handy to be able to do multiple. Um, you know, it's it's. I, I couldn't believe how many people asked this same question, and so I, I'm I'm confident that this video will be a hit. Everybody's going to be very happy about this one. Yep. I mean, I revised my blog like three times, including all of these. So. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a like hit task also. <laughs> So now that our flow is ready, it's time to test. Uh, I'm going to test it from a previous run because okay. we have the attachments provided over there. Yep. Given test. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, so it was successful. Woo! At least check the runs. So as we had attachments, it uh, resulted as true. And then it went into the scope where uh, it ex extracted both the files from the OneDrive folder and then it sent it as an email. So now let's awesome. check the email. As you can see over here, it has sent a new email saying that a new form has been submitted by the name and department. And these are the screenshots from my uh, system that I uploaded. So here we have the files as well. Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Two, two birds, one stone. How to solve multiple attachments and how to do a check and make sure that you don't have empty attachments. This is, this is awesome, man. And I love how, how quickly you're able to put this stuff together and how easy you make it look. Like I said before, this is awesome. Correct. So let's quickly check also the uh, empty attachments part. Okay. So here right now what we have is like, uh, the IDs question is a compulsory one. So yep. I'm going to edit the form first. And then uh, make it as a non-required field. Okay. Preview now. So it's not a required item now. I'll fill the form again. Let's just put Yash and I'll say HR here and submit. So if I come back to my flow, This was the second run. So as you can see, the inputs like uh, it has evaluated the expression as false. 
because there were no attachments and it sent an email stating that, okay, this person has submitted a new form, but there have been no attachments. And here on my email box, I can see the same that, okay, a new form has been submitted, but no files have been uh, attached with the form. Nice. Yeah. Brad. Good work, man. This is awesome. And like, and like in a 15 minute video too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yash, thank you so much for coming and joining us again, for answering this big question for the audience. I know they're going to love it. And for you guys at home, be sure to go and follow Yash. Get on his Twitter, get on his blog, go and talk to him in the community where he is a super user on both sides, apps and automate. He's everywhere and, and he's very, very willing to help you solve things. And so if you need help, put your question in the community, tag him, there's a good opportunity, you'll get a, a response. So Yash, man, one more time, Thanks so much for coming and joining regularly and sharing your knowledge, man. Really appreciate all you do for this community. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much for providing the opportunity. My pleasure. All right, you guys know what to do. Click like, click subscribe, go and follow Yash right away in all the places. And that's it. Much love from me. I will see you in the next one.